Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Amber Rain Davis from NotableInk.com. I'm here with a card for Simon Says Stamps December 2018 release. This card is part of my CPR series and that stands for Craft Project Resuscitation. It's for those situations where things go wrong or not at all like you planned and you have to figure out how to resuscitate it and make a card. So here's the product. It's the decorative Hamsa die. This die is so pretty and it's versatile. Um, I have four cards in this set and I encourage you to check them all out because they're all completely different. You can do a lot of different things with this particular die. So with my last card, I actually used these two outer pieces to create a flower on a card. And for this card, I had all of these leftover pieces from the middle. I decided because I used the Curious Metallic cardstock, which is kind of a semi-porous surface, that they might be good to use as stencils. So I got a gel press for my birthday, and this will be the first time that I'm using it. Um, for whatever reason, I just well, I also got alcohol inks for my birthday, so I decided that I needed to put those two together and use them for this project. So. I'm going to be using Ranger alcohol inks in Current, Pebble, and Eggplant for this first try. And I'm going to do this a couple different times because, again, this is the first time I'm using a gel press. I had watched a couple videos before I purchased the supplies. I probably should have gone back and watched them again before doing this, but, you know, there's something to be said for jumping right in, too. So... I have put all three colors down directly onto the gel press and I just have a straw here and I'm, I'm moving the inks around. Um, what that's also doing is it's also, sorry, excuse my hair, it's also um, drying the ink in the process. So now what I've done is I've sprayed the alcohol ink with a bottle of alcohol and I just got that bottle of alcohol f directly from CVS. They, they sell alcohol in a spray bottle, which I find to be really useful, not only for alcohol ink projects, but also to clean your surfaces. Um, I love it. So I was really happy to find it in a spray bottle. So my alcohol ink is dry, and now I am putting on some just basic white acrylic paint from the craft store. I put on way too much. Um, so I'm just trying to get a feel for how this all works. So I can tell that I have too much paint on there. I think if I put the paper on at this point, it would not peel all of the alcohol ink off. So what I'm doing, I just grabbed a piece of cardstock over there and I'm just rolling off some of that ink. I wanna be able to see a little bit of the gel press, a little bit of the ink underneath so that when I put my cardstock panel on, it's going to peel off all the paint and the alcohol ink. So that's what I'm doing here. So, so far, just some trial and error to figure out how this all works and, and what I'm doing here. Even, um, well, let's talk about this first. So I was really happy with how it pulled literally everything off of the gel press, but I didn't like how the brayer um, left edges and marks on the paint. I also didn't like how individualized the alcohol bits were um, there wasn't a good blend between that and the paint and I think that's because the alcohol ink was dry so we're gonna give it another shot um, and this time I'm actually using more alcohol ink so that there's less space in between the alcohol areas um, and so I've also added a fourth color so I use the same three colors and I added aqua, so it's aqua, currant, eggplant, and pebble. So I've added more ink. I've also gone all the way out to the edges of the gel press, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the straw and just kind of swirl it around, get them to mix a little bit. And because there was so much alcohol ink this time around, it took much longer to dry. Um, in my mind, the reason I wanted the alcohol ink to dry is because if it were to mix with the white paint, I wouldn't really have a white background, I'd have a pink background. And in fact, that is what ended up happening here. Like you can see it mixing right there. Um, a little bit more than I wanted it to, but okay. I mean, it, it was all right. 
Um, so again, I still added too much paint. Um, I'm wondering if it would be better to put not put the paint directly on the gel press, but maybe put it on, I mean, I have a craft mat over here that I totally haven't used yet because to be honest, it's white and I want to keep it white, which is silly because I really should use it. But anyway, I got I to gotta break that barrier there. So now I've decided that I'm going to put these, my so-called stencils down in kind of just a random pattern. And then I have these little swirls. So these little swirls came out of there also. And I thought that would, like this would create a pretty cool background. I've never done this before. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but in my mind, I'm thinking that these are gonna create a negative space on this panel when I peel it up. So um, my dies were a little bit curled. The paper was curled, so I'm just using the brayer to roll over it. So you're going to see how this turns out, but I'm also wondering would it have been better to just put my paper directly over the stencils and not brayer it down? I'm not sure. I think either way could work. So I'm just using my, um, my tweezers to pull these off and I'm not taking any care about where I'm putting these or what I'm doing with things. I'm just kind of flipping them off to the side. And it's leaving a nice negative impression on, on the gel press. I'm liking how that looks. I feel like my paint is, I feel like my paint is probably just as thin as it was on the previous card, but because the stenciling is taking longer, I do believe the paint is drier. Um, because you're gonna see when I pull this up, the outcome that I get with this, what do you what do you call it? This press, I guess this press, is completely different than the first time around. I was actually pretty happy with how it turned out the first time around. Total fail, like that is not pretty. And I have so much paint left on the gel press. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try a couple different things. So right now I'm rooting around to figure out, okay, well, what can I do to rehydrate this? I grabbed my mini mister of water and perfect pearls because why not? Who doesn't like a little shimmer? So I'm trying to rehydrate the paint with that, still keeping my design intact. And I'm gonna grab another piece of, and the card stack that I'm using is just half sheets of Nina Classic Crest Solar Way 80 pound. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and let's see how this turns out. All right, big reveal. Here it comes. I don't even wanna peel it up. I can already tell because there's so much left on there. I'm like, ugh, I'm like, no, negative, don't like it. So now I'm spraying the gel press with alcohol ink and I've decided, okay, maybe cardstock isn't the right thing. I dug around for some Yupo paper, so I'm gonna give that a try. So you can see, um, and probably if I had used maybe a little bit less alcohol, it rehydrated really nicely. And so we're gonna take a look at what this looks like on Yupo paper. And I like the vibrancy of the colors um, but it wasn't a great pattern. I didn't love the pattern. So I'm going to give this a try. And I think this is regular. Yeah, this is definitely regular cardstock again. So you can see how that's bleeding through. So we'll take a look at that. And that's not vibrant at all. That's kind of dulled out. This looks much nicer. Um, I don't look at the grainy parts. I think that's how the paint reacted with the alcohol. And so I still have this mess on my gel press. So I'm spraying that down with alcohol, just a regular alcohol mix. And I'm kind of like, well, do I waste that paint on there? Do I go, I was intending to wipe it up, but then I decided I'll take that original, the very original one that I did, and I'll put the rest of this paint and alcohol ink on there. Because I, again, I didn't love how there wasn't enough texture on there. And that I thought looked pretty cool. So here's a recap of all the panels that were made. So this was the first one we did and added to this one. There's barely anything on it. That one I really don't like at all. This one was on the Yupo paper 
and I like what's going on in that left hand corner there. I think that looks like a galaxy type situation. And then this was on regular cardstock and it's, it's more muted. So then I pulled up, as I was cleaning up, I pulled up the stencils and I really liked what was going on with those. So because it was a metallic cardstock and then you've also got the alcohol ink on there, which is transparent, it almost gives it like a distressed metallic kind of look, which I thought was really cool. So I was feeling a little bit better about, you know, kind of spending all the time on this and what we created. So I decided to use that muted piece of cardstock um, and to create a background panel. And I'm going to use that lighter one as a front piece. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like the, the hands on the darker piece back there. But for whatever reason when I was doing this, I didn't think that looked as good as it did on the lighter piece. So I've just cut down the lighter piece with a stitch die and I popped it up on a piece of fun foam. I'm adding that to a little bit of uh, soft navy cardstock. And I'm just gonna burnish it with my bone folder to make sure that it's adhered well. And then I'll go ahead and get these two panels adhered to the back piece. So the piece in the back with it being mostly covered up, I feel like it doesn't look quite as muted. It looks a little bit like a galaxy situation going on. I like that there's also some white around the edges. So when I cut it, I kind of looked for, instead of it just being a complete block of color to make sure that there was some white showing. So I'm just gonna take my um, faux metallic elements here and get them arranged on here. I liked these little swirly guys that came out of the, um, they were the, I guess, the positive pieces that came out of the die. And what I decided to do with those is just glue the middle down so that we could have some dimension on the card. So um, once I get everything arranged, I'm somewhat feeling better about the failed uh, gel press pieces. So I'm just gonna take some Ranger multi Matte Medium and glue these pieces down. I'm just going to pop them on there and then put a stamp block on top of them to hold them down. Weigh it down a little bit while I'm gluing the other pieces. And so like I said here, for the little corkscrews, I'm only going to glue the center. And once those are dry, I'll go ahead and you'll use my jewel picker tool to hold the center. I don't want to accidentally pull them off. So I'm going to hold the center down with my jewel picker tool and then I'll use the tweezers to pull up the corkscrew to get a little bit of dimension on those, which I think looks pretty cool. And um, so we'll go ahead and do a few more of those. And then after those are done, I decide that the hands can also be pulled up as well and get dimension on those. So I'm just gonna curl those up with my fingers We'll do all the edges. And then once the edges are kind of curled in and popped up, the center of them starts to look a little flat because that's primarily what's glued to the card. And so in order to make that look a little bit better, I decide that the leaves need to be popped up. So I just hold the spine down right at the base of the leaf and then use the tweezers to pull those leaves up to get dimension. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the inside of the little corkscrews there. And I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna use some soft navy ink. I um, cut down a strip off of that same ink panel, inked panel, and I'm just gonna stamp sending good vibes. Um, this card looks ethereal to me, kind of, you know, um, in that vein, so sending good vibes I thought was a good sentiment. So now I'm just figuring out, okay, how long do I want the sentiment strip? I'm gonna get it cut down to size. I'm gonna play around with what looks best on the card. I've obviously got some dimensional areas on here. So I decide that corkscrew needs to be pushed down flat again, and that it looks best near the bottom down there, about an inch from the bottom. So I popped this up with, I think those are the Doris, um foam strips. And I'm gonna get that popped up. I'll add it to a card base and that'll be the final card. 
I hope you enjoyed this latest edition of my CPR series. Here's a close-up of the card and you can really see how those die cuts do look metallic with the alcohol inks on top of the Curious Metallic cardstock. I can't predict when I'm going to have a new addition to the CPR series or the craft project resuscitation. I don't ever really know when something's going to go not as planned, but I can guarantee that there will be more. There's always going to be something that goes wrong and I think what's important is seeing it as an opportunity to learn a new technique and really stretch your design skills to figure out, okay, well that didn't go as planned. But what can I do with it now? How can I use what I have created to come up with something different and something usable? Um, so I really did in the end enjoy this experience and I definitely am gonna use that gel press again and try different techniques. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, products are going to be listed below. There are three other cards in this series, so be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe so that you don't miss those. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Notable Inc. I also teach some classes, so be sure to check out my website at notableinc.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day.